Guys, this is Todd Parnell. Todd Parnell is a writer, a clean water activist, a retired Drury University president, and a retired banker, but he's still very active in our community, and we are very glad to have him here tonight. I'm sure about 95% of you are sitting out there after the professionalism, the brilliance, and the passion of our three previous speakers. What in the world am I listening to? An old guy who's a retired banker, a retired educator, talk about adventures in life. It's a fair question. I'm not a real writer. I've never been trained to be a writer. I've never gone to a workshop. I've never gone to a special session or a seminar on writing. I've never read one of those, you know, how do you write books? I hate to admit it, the last writing course I had had to be at least half a century ago, back when Drury was a college. So it is a fair question. But I'm here because I love to write. It's fun. It's fun to me. I'm here because I believe there's a muse lurking in many of you out there if you just give it a chance to come out. And if I have sharing, the joy, and the fun, and the adventure that I've gotten from releasing my own news with you, if we consider and take a chance, these next couple of minutes will be well spent. Now, I do have to tell you, writing is a contact sport. <laughs> it is not always fun to write. My first manuscript I ever wrote in my life was after I had a marvelous adventure on a magnificent river with one of my sons holding the whole way of the Buffalo River uh, back when he was in his teens. And I was so uh, moved by it and so excited by it that I had to write it. I wanted to save it for him to have as he grew up, but also for me to have a memory. Well, I made this mistake of telling a friend of mine who's a writer uh, about it. And he said he wanted to read it. He read it. He said, this is really good. It's really different. You know, you need to get this published. And I didn't want to get published. I just wanted it for us. He said, I've got an editor that will clean it up for you so you can go to a publisher and get published. Come on. So I agreed to let him send my manuscript to an editor that he said he'd used before. Waited a couple of weeks. This is what I got back. <laughs> dear Todd, this would be the kindest thing dear editor would say to me over the ensuing <laughs> I did not find your work compelling. Something it needs to be if you hope not to have a basement full of unsold copies. <laughs> he then proceeded to point out major factual errors, probable factual errors, errors of omission, my descriptives. In general, your descriptions of the natural beauty of the river are less compelling. <laughs> the inept angle. <laughs> you report numerous episodes which make you seem to be a total novice on a camp out. I wonder just how much you want to give away of your own inhabitants. <laughs> My fear, I, I'm reading this because you've got to see the words. I mean, these are the actual words. My fear is that some city slicker is going to come up from Dallas, read your book, imitate your technique, and seriously enter it. <laughs> Well, at least I made it to the last page. So what's the salvage? Don't mistake these heavy criticisms for an outright condemnation of your book. Trust me when I say I'm on your side. <laughs> well, I've never been so humiliated in my life. Well, maybe a couple times. But nothing like that. I took that manuscript. I stuck it as deep in the corner of my closet that I could. I hope never ever see it again and hope particularly that my son would never see it again. Until <laughs> I ran into my author friend and he said, how's my book coming? I said, uh, totally my tail low. And he just laughed at me. He said, don't pay any attention to that old guy. He didn't know what he's talking about. Well, why didn't you tell me about this up front? Somehow, the Buffalo Bend in me, which is what the book became, watered its way into print, published by the University of Missouri Press. 
a couple other books followed uh, about my family, a book about my mother, mom at war, her experiences as an American Red Cross girl in the, uh, World War II, and Postcards from Branson, which is about my family's four generations uh, growing up in uh, Branson. Does that fly, Amy? Oh. But I really had fun in my first retirement life. And then six years at Drury, uh, my wife and I decided it was time for us to retire again. And uh, we decided we'd take a trip, go on vacation, celebrate the joy that had been those six years, and uh, try to learn how to be retired again. I remember sitting in the airport with her and uh, looking at her and saying, you know, I had so much fun writing my first retirement. I really want to do it again. She kind of turned to me and looked at me in all seriousness and said, for God's sake, don't write about your family anymore. The people are tired of those stories. <laughs> well, you know, kind of set me back a little bit. Well, what do I write about? And she said, write fiction. I said, how, how in the world would I ever write fiction? She said, it's easy. <laughs> you find something that you, you're passionate about, that you love, that, that you grew up with, growing up in a small town, growing up in the Ozarks, uh, creeks, rivers and uh, the environment. You make it a mystery. You put some brutal murders in it, right up in the front. <laughs> space them out along the way. You put some mayhem, some corruption, and some sex in it. And maybe even a little supernatural. Well, next morning I got up at 4 o'clock. We'd flown west and my time clock was way off. And I sat down in my computer. The first words I wrote for skunk cream. I have no idea where that came from. I had no outline. I had no plot. I had no characters. I had no uh, idea where this was going to go. But I followed my wife's advice and I let her rip. Is that what she told me to do? I let her rip. Four months later, Scott Creek was finished, at least I thought it was, uh, because I'd already started a second a sequel. I was having too much fun. I couldn't stop. And so I decided to take my book, uh, my manuscript, out to a couple of people to, to take a look at it and tell me whether I thought I'd gone to the wild side a little too much. And I took it back to my writer friend, naturally. And he said, oh, man, Todd, I really like this. I've got an editor. <laughs> <laughs> it only takes so much humiliation in an entire lifetime. Uh, he said, no, this is a real one. And he referred me to a real editor been the editor for the Ozark Mountaineer for many, many years. He knew the Ozarks, he knew the folk tales, he knew it all. And he, he liked it. He said, I've got a publisher. I'd like to send this to him to see if he would have any interest in publishing this. And I said, okay, go ahead. I took it out to a couple of other friends. Eh, mixed reviews. Some of them got the humor that I was attempting. Some of them didn't. All of them said, you wrote this? <laughs> And then when it really started to go downhill fast, I took it to one of my wife's best friends. He lived down in Colorado. She wanted to read the manuscript we were visiting. And uh, I said, you may or may not want to do this. She'd she been our neighbor for eight years. And she said, uh, I know you. Nothing will surprise me. <laughs> so I left. Left her a copy of the manuscript. And uh, I heard back, not the first week, not the second week, not the third week. I never heard back. If you leave a manuscript with a friend and you don't hear back from them for a month, you know you got a problem. So my wife comes in to me one day and said, I just heard from Susan. She said, this is her comment, what's there to like about this book? All of your characters are reprehensible. <laughs> reprehensible. Talk about a dagger in the heart. These are people I created, that I love, warts and all, that I live with and cry with and grow with and get married with. Reprehensible? I had to get another opinion fast because the publishers got the manuscript. So I go to my best friend growing up, he lived in Branson, knew him since kindergarten, and uh, he's lived in Chicago and he was an editor, so he knew, he knew about reading books. He didn't take long to get back to me. He got back to me in about four days maybe. He said, you know, Todd, I really liked your nonfiction stuff, but this just isn't for me. It's wanton. I had to go to the dictionary to figure out how embarrassing that was. He says it's where dog patch meets valley of the dogs. Some of you old enough out there know what that means. Some of you don't. 
So, you know, I'm in a real mess now. If the publisher says yes, what am I going to do? Pull a book? I, I can't go out there and make a fool out of myself. So I went to one more friend. He's a, he's a leader here in town, very close friend, very honest person. He knows the pulse of our community better than anybody I know. I said, help me out here. you, you got to tell me whether I've gone off the deep end. Tell me whether this is something that I should release or not. He said he would, and I promised him a beer for his services. About a week later, he called me back and said he was ready for his beer. <laughs> we sit down, he doesn't say a word about my book. First so I'm, I'm really not sure what's happening. And he turned to me and he said, Todd, I really like it. It's different. It's good. You know what you've done? I said, I have no idea. He said, there are a whole lot of different thoughts. He said, you have written an Ozarkian folktale. Go read your Vance Randolph. Well, I ran home as fast as I could. I pulled out my Vance Randolph. And, uh, you know, I'll spare you there. Well, for those of you who don't know, he, he, he was, he's probably the premier folklorist for the Ozarks in the history. People in the library might tell me different, but I, I, he, he just is. He spent the first half of the 20th century wandering the Ozarks, talking to anybody that would talk to him, writing down any story they told him, any song they, they would sing to him. He wrote the words down. He compiled it, got it to university presses. University presses loved it. Dying culture, getting recorded. So they printed it all. And he started noticing that his favorite stories weren't making the cut. The colorful stories were being left out. So he took it into his own hands. He did his own volume of his favorite stories. And I'll spare you the indignity of the title of the volume, but let's just say there was a sentence in there that I'll never forget. It came at the right time in my, in the right, in my uh, life. It said, you cannot present an accurate picture of Ozark's folklore without including something obscene. <laughs> so there you go. I was cleared for landing. My publisher wanted to one in three books, not one. I've been writing ever since. I'm in my second trilogy and having the time of my life. But again, that's not why I'm here tonight. I can assure you it's not because of the $33.05 commission check I got for the first quarter sales from Scumfrey. <laughs> because I'm here to challenge some of you out there. To let that muse go. To tell you that it's fun. To tell you that it is an adventure. And to, next time you're bored, don't watch TV. Don't play your kids' video games. Don't get on the phone and talk for an hour. Go sit in the shade outside. Sit in the corner of a sunlit room. Take a pad and a pencil or your computer laptop. Think about something that really excites you, that you're really moved by, or that you think is really funny. Start writing. Start writing. Let her rip, my wife told me. Now, I hope that you like uh, Skunk Creek. If you do, I hope you will go to Amazon.com. There's five, five gold stars, you know. Two sentences of glowing review. If you don't, Blame her, my wife, <laughs> and Van Randa, and whatever, as they said in my youth, right on. <laughs> right on.